changing gender is right, changing right. gender equality, uh, which I'm doing by asking for six and a half billion pounds to produce five hundred thousand neurodivergent female brains in the next ten years. Okay. Very good. Okay, and who's who would like to popcorn up next and say something? Don't be shy. No much time. All right, fine. Edwin K. Morris, I'm here in the large area of western New York State in the eastern area of the United States. I'm the president and founder of Pioneer Knowledge Services. We're the first 501c3, which is a nonprofit in the U.S. tax code, um, of doing knowledge management to help other nonprofits build knowledge. I'm in. Thank you very much. Thanks, Edwin. Who'd like to go next? What's up, big guys? Yeah, okay, so my name's Warren, uh, one of the co-founders of Robocall. Uh, so we're a recruitment and technology business. Uh, we, we, we also a franchise company as well. So uh, what we do is bring entrepreneurs literally from scratch to successful recruiters. And we're also driving AI and robotics into their business. So helping, it's basically helping small business with, with robotics and AI on the data analytics side. Um, and I'm, my background sales um, and recruitment. So that's me. Thanks very much, Ron. And by the way, feel free to share a link in the in the chat, uh, a link or okay. and get let's get that out of the way now, so it doesn't interrupt Esme's <laughs> talk. You know what I mean? You know all that all that kind of <laughs> sharing stuff. Uh, who who else would like to go for a minute or so? I'm happy to say hello. Um, I, it, yeah. I'm Stephen Steve Hilton. Um, it's nice to be here. I've not been to this before. Um, I run a I set up and run a business called City Global Futures, based in Bristol in the UK. Um, we do work around sort of place making and inclusive, smart and sustainable sort of cities, uh, working with government and local government and business. And that's me. And we right. use a lot of narrative and stories as part of our work, which is what particularly attracted me to tonight. Great stuff. Okay, thanks very much, Stephen. It's great. Anybody else? Um, Jen, oh, go sorry, Claire, you go. No, go on, go on, you go first. So I'm Jane, I'm based in Guildford in the UK. I'm a teacher and I facilitate places for creativity and play. Um, I'm running a speaking event this evening. Actually, I've got six speakers uh, joining me for my monthly Stand Up and Speak for Yourself event. I also curate a month, a weekly newsletter. And in the newsletter, I'll hopefully put some of this into the newsletter this week and um, the event from tonight. And I also have a business, well, a, a movement called Resilient Kids, which is again about giving uh, kids vitality, vision and voice. Thanks very much, Jane. Thank you, Niall. Next person. So, shall I go? Ladies <clears throat> so, oh, first. <laughs> um, thank you. Um, so, hi everyone, I'm Claire Palmer. Um, just a week ago, I finished a 25-year career with BT, where I did anti-bribery and corruption. So, if you're in the UK and you watch Line of Duty, that's effectively yeah. what I did for BT. Um, but now I've set up my own coaching and leadership consultancy business, because um, I won BT's Best Coach a couple of years ago. And I'm really passionate about getting people to change their mindset, both in leadership and outside of, of uh, that environment, so that they go on and do better things and support each other in, in, in better ways, really. Um, so my business is called Clarity by Claire. Um, and my main course that I've got running at the moment is called Stop Talking Shit to Yourself. Um, and it's all about breaking back that personal chatter that says you're not good enough to be here which is exactly what I thought when you all started saying your stories because I was like why am I here with these people but I'm, I'm sure you'll make me feel welcome <laughs> of course everybody's very welcome this is the, this is the peer space so it's <laughs> uh, okay um who else hasn't gone a few more haven't gone hi Lena um, uh, I think Lena Sally and Hack haven't gone but yeah can, uh, can go oh sorry Oh, um, no, well, yeah, Esme, no, you, 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 go you, for you it. got, you got, you get the stage, the whole stage in a minute. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Sally, do you want, Sally, would you like to go? To go next. So, hi, I'm Sally. I'm based in Northampton in the UK. I'm a consultant finance director and part of my portfolio is the three-year-old peer space, although I've only been with uh, with the team for a few months. So that's a, an exciting thing that I'm doing. Uh, like Claire, I had a long career with the same company. Um, I was 28 years in the same business in HMB before I uh, set up to go on my own. So I kind of know where you're coming from, Claire, in terms of, uh, of making a complete 
career switch but uh if your experience is anything like mine i'm sure you won't regret it so it's lovely to see some new faces and some faces i've seen before and uh look forward to hearing from esme as well great thanks sally so which leaves hack and lena hack, hack go on <laughs> okay uh yeah i'm just a guy uh, i have a long career in social work um now i'm Left that in 2018 uh, to do a little music and healing and various stuff. Um, quite active on LinkedIn, which is my main platform. And uh, I recently, or just a few minutes ago, I uh, set up a, a company page called Healers Hub, uh, which will be for healers to exchange clients and help each, each other out instead of the competing, uh, because we, we don't really need to compete. There are so many people who need it. So I want to, to have a place where, where we can connect and we can help each other out because we're all working for the common good. So that's me. Great. Thanks, Huck. Great. And Lena, welcome. Hi guys, I'm really sorry I'm a tad bit late. I had a, another event that sort of overran a little bit. So I uh, met some of you. Hi Jonathan, so good to see you here. Uh, and uh, oh, similarly to you guys, um, I was in a corporate background. I've actually relocated at a very short period of time, two weeks to a new place with no social network, uh, change career, and then lots of things happen, change career again. and. Uh, Currently, I'm building a community of uh, SMEs and businesses to support them, help them grow. And yeah, I'm an avid networker. So happy to be here. So thank you now for, for inviting me and um, hopefully uh, be able to chat to you guys one-to-one uh, -one later on. Great. Thanks, Lena. So what I'll just quickly say is um, this is the peer space. It's been running three years and it started as a dinner group. I'm from the southwest of England. I'm back in the southwest of England now. But I, um, I started a dinner group while I was living overseas in Bulgaria. And we did that for nearly two years. And of course, it all stopped in the lockdown. And uh, I was still out there. And we run one of these almost every week since uh, online. Um, with a, either, either a speaker night like this or a, or a connecting night where we do one-to-one. -one. So tonight is a speaker night with Esme as the featured guest. I met Esme through Jane uh, at one of her uh, random dialogue events where we, were all, we all took five minutes to speak each. It's a wonderful event I recommend. Is that the one tonight, Jane? Yeah. Um, and uh, well, Esme, what I know of Esme is that um, she's uh, very much into environmental issues. She does a lot of cool events and uh, she's a storyteller. And the format for the rest of the night basically is that the floor is hers. We stop by about five to the hour just to sort of wrap up and uh, some, some sort of stuff about future events. So since we are nearly at 20 past the hour, without further ado, I'd like to hand over to Esme to take the stage and do her thing. Over to you. Wicked. Thank you, Noel. Thanks everyone for being here. Good to see some familiar faces. Okay, so like Noel said, I'd like to take this time to start by telling a story. So last year in lockdown, I would cycle on the way to my grandma's and on this cycle ride, I noticed a tree. And this tree was a willow tree. It was so big, it almost looked fluffy. It was so green and luscious. And there was a carpet of leaves that scattered like confetti below. And every time I would cycle past this tree, I noticed that there was different parts of it that would change. So in the wind, it would look different. And in, sometimes it would be raining as well. Um, I even noticed different people. So there'd be children going by or old people shuffling along. And this tree then just started to connect with me. I just was like, oh, you know what? I'm starting to see this tree as a character. I'm starting to see this tree as this, this connection, this oneness. And with all the turmoil that was going on around us with COVID-19, I decided to pick up a pen and just write. Um, you know, I just 
wrote whatever I could about this tree because I felt that there was like I said a character bed embedded in this tree and I thought to myself oh gosh if this tree could see what has it seen over the years you know has it seen first kisses it's gone through weather changes and now it's gone through so much human intervention um, and it's you know our trees are going through so many problems um, and then as I you know, wrote the therapeutic part. Um, it was, you know, something that I probably took like maybe a day to write, um, maybe two days. And then after I wrote this beautiful story, I suddenly thought, shit, where actually is all the therapy gone? Because now I'm just overthinking and overthinking in my head about how I've got to promote this book. You know, I've got to now, okay, get a publisher or do I even get a publisher like I'm searching on YouTube um like you know how to self-publish and just all these thoughts started to come into my head and suddenly I was just like this is actually not therapeutic anymore you know me writing this beautiful story is actually just flipped on its head and now if anything I'm almost loathing it because I'm like oh crap you know how am I gonna promote this book and in turn with promoting it also really makes you shine a mirror to yourself because you're like I've got to now promote myself and there started to and I started to encompass all these self-limiting beliefs um and the three that were coming up for me uh the main ones was I'm not a good writer. Um, you know, will children even vibe with the book or does it even make sense? Does the actual structure? So like I said, you know, all these bloody thoughts were coming in my head. Um, because I'm quite, uh, I don't know, let's say, well, I'm, I'm spiritual, but I'm also, I like to get a bit deep. I like to get a bit philosophical. Um, I like to l learn about the mind as much as I can. So I really wanted to uncover why I was thinking these three different thoughts. And what mainly came up was the emotion of fear, you know, and that's what happens with so many of us. There's, um, you know, we all have, we can all have these self-limiting beliefs and, and if you uncover it, it can be fear. Um, so I'd just actually like to quickly ask some of you guys, have you ever had these cross road scenarios and have you ever had self-limiting beliefs and if you have like just pop them in the chat if you know like I'm I'm not a good runner or um oh I'm not a good writer like what kind of self-limiting beliefs have you guys ever had to you know let's be vulnerable here let's all share because that's the other thing as well it's about you know being and being vulnerable and this is what this journey has taught me it's about like oh gosh you know <laughs> I've got to I've got to keep, I've got to keep going. Yeah. So Warren all the time. Yeah. Imposter syndrome over girls. <laughs> oh no. I'm more the opposite in that framework. That's great. Edwin. Yeah, exactly. Taking the flip on it. Um, if anyone says they haven't had self limiting needs ever, I don't believe them. Yeah. Very true. You know, and I think that's saying something as well. You know, the fact that we should all actually have these self limiting beliefs to an extent to then like push ourselves to the next level and then I don't know be doing things like I'm doing today and sharing with you all um about getting through this and being vulnerable um and just expressing our our fears um because we can so easily just just keep them in um so I remember sitting with my first album about to push the button for Spotify publishing. Oh my gosh, that must have been such a nervous but exciting feeling. That's so cool. I'd love to know your music as well, um, Rion or Hakon. And yeah, Jane, I've had lots of ideas and then get tired of details and then do a new idea instead of working out. Yeah, I'm like here, there, everywhere too. Like my, my mind, because I'm quite an energetic person. So my mind can equally be is energetic so that's why I find meditation and just breathing really helpful yeah fear of fear of failure yeah so just thank yeah thank you guys for being vulnerable with me as well 
Um, so with that, so with these three self-limiting beliefs, and like I said, I was just trying to unpack it all. And I realized that, you know, fear was coming up a lot in this. Um, I wanted to write some solutions. And when I say solutions, you know, I'm still, it's, it's not like, oh, the be all and end all. Like, I've, you know, that's it, like done and dusted. It's obviously it's a practice, you know, like anything in life, and it's um, a routine. You've got to make sure that you are practicing and doing it there and saying yourself like, you know, I am a good writer and da, 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 um, over and over again uh, to, to really unpack it. So, you know, when I said I'm not a good writer, you know, there was fear within that. Um, and that might be, you know, stemming from the school days when I would, um, get like a D or something in my bloody essay and then the teacher would be like what is this crap um, you know so these little triggers and it's just actually the flipping that on its head and starting to rewrite those stories in our head so that's where you know I'm doing the lovely writing part but actually the writing part in here and the story that I'm telling for myself is not the one. So I didn't actually realize, but um, last week, Warren mentioned NLP and I didn't even realize that I was doing it, but it's um, called Neuro Linguistic Programming, if you guys don't know it. Um, it was, well, the name stemmed from these two guys in California um, called Richard Bandler and John Grinder. And essentially from one of, like one of the parts of what it's about it's um just changing that vocabulary that we that we can tell ourselves in our head so for example instead of using the word struggle I started to use the word journey because at the end of the day this is a beautiful journey that I'm on you know this is insane I've never written a book before this is like oh my god it's the first time I'm doing this you know this is it's it shouldn't be a struggle anymore and like I said I'm I'm going through this whole journey in my head and processing things so it's um trying to see light in that as well um another amazing gift or gift is it um, someone someone taught me was um recent and you know obviously we all do it but it's gratitude so gratitude is something that we I hope you know we've all been grateful in our lives but do we actually practice it and it sounds silly but to actually say out loud I'm grateful to even be able to have paper to write on to write this story or I'm grateful for the sun shining down on my face which will therefore make me have more vitamin d and the vitamin d makes me more efficient and happy to be able to continue to write more and it's just pairing up those little chains in our head to then switch that and think more positively at the end of the day um so i started to write a gratitude journal so just three little points before bed or now I just do it when I'm walking, you know, so I'm in, I'm in a city at the moment and sometimes the towers can feel a bit. So I just try and zoom into a little wallflower and I'm like, okay, I'm grateful for that little wallflower or I'm grateful that that person held open the door for me. Um, so yeah, great gratefulness, gratitude. It's a, it's a beautiful thing. Um, so, and it's free. Um, and then, you know, the, the support um the the just ongoing support that that we have that we have all around us you know whether that be from um you know our family our friends or um to or chat shows um not chat shows um you know chat lines oh I'm loving all these comments so I'm just having to establish a new environment and you're being constantly pushed down as I don't have the London experience. Yeah. Oh gosh. Yeah. I know being in a city, I'm like, Brr. so um, just realizing that there's that support there. And like I've said before, it can be so scary to, to ask and just say out loud, Oh, you know, like I, I need a little bit of help because, because we're worried about what the person might think. But it's just trying to snip that 
with a big scissor and just say no you know just ask for that little bit of support um and you know from from asking for support um and letting that fear drop a bit and that curtain fall and the vulnerability to flow in my mum said to me oh you know what there's a point where it actually stops becoming about the you about the me and it starts to become the we and that just really stayed with me because to be honest like so many projects if we do anything mindfully we should actually be like letting every single project or idea that we have in our minds out to the world because it's like that might affect someone in such a positive way so why would we not share with someone and this book that I'm writing this project is all about trees you know this is about the future of our planet the only planet we're living on so it's like basically in the nicest way possible to myself is shut the f up well you know being a bit kind to myself but get on with it in the sense of it's about the we you know it's 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 trying to educate children this book um and it and yeah, I, I do feel like mum's mum's talk really, really did inspire me to just um, continue with this process of stop having such self-limiting beliefs. Um, and, you know, like I started this this talk, um, like every every human, we all have a story to share. Um, and I just would love you to really dive into that authentic soul you know go right in here because that is where the authentic soul lies and the more we tap into that then that is where we start we stop becoming the I and the self-centered part and then becoming the we like I said and then we can create such a ripple effect of joy with that if we just keep sharing our stories if they're you know done in a really mindful way um yes so that is wrapping up I realize that I've gone a bit short but I'm going to I've got a bloody clock here and everything but no worries. typical um that's great that's a, that's yeah, a TED talk that's, that's a TED talk isn't it yeah, absolutely. <laughs> like, like, well, well, open it up to everyone. But I really want to say one thing, which is that when Esme was uh, talking about doing her talk, um, I just felt like this real energy that you are trying to tell a story. And that, that before I'd heard any of the talk, and I just want to personally say, definitely keep going yourself. You know, I mean, like the message you're putting to everyone else, I would definitely say, and I really, really believe that as well, that definitely keep going and all the expression, all the things you're, you're however they evolve and however you express them. Um, so thanks very much for taking this opportunity to, Thank to, you. to do your sharing, as it were. So so basically, we've got about we've got a good sort of 20 minutes uh, to just open it up now. Uh, so if anyone has a question for Esme, if anyone has a thought about that theme, uh, I won't go around. It'll just be like you just want to throw in, but but the starting point could be you want to ask Esme a question, or if you have a, a comment on the stuff that's come up. Um, just, who anyone like to say anything? Yeah, I sort of mentioned if uh, for Esme when you were saying, um, you know, how you, you sort of your mind uh, gets in the way, and you know you you've got to attempt it and try it and get it going. That's one thing. It's really important. It's just to do it. And then also sharing your ideas with other people is so important as well because your ideas mm -hmm. come that they don't receive and when you do share them, they don't cost you anything. It's just, there's nothing to them, but it could make all the difference in someone else's life. You know what I mean? So that's 100%. Yeah. When you start practicing that, um, people think to you, why would you give me something that'll help me? And they start to start to like you. They start to draw closer and they actually start giving you back energy and back ideas as well. And then before you know it, you start a collective effort and people start to you know, you, you start to grow a team and, and mm -hmm. you know, whatever endeavor or whatever it is you're trying to do. So it mm -hmm. does, it helps, it works a lot. Mm, really yeah, really I definitely resonate with the creating a team. I love that because sometimes these projects can feel a little bit, um, well, solo, can't they? And I think it's yeah. just like branching that out and just, like I said, just getting that support and then realize you've, it's okay to ask people questions. <laughs> That's right. Great. Somebody else? I want to say a little bit actually about 
Resume. I think it was about four years ago, and I went along to an event in, in Woking, and it was called Plast. Uh, I think it was called Plast Free. I can't, uh, plastic Free. It was about it was about encra- encouraging Woking to be plastic free, mm. and the viewing of a film. Anyway, and I got there, and there was loads of people, and it was a really well organised event. And there was this little girl in a red top and dungarees who'd put it all on. And she'd got all these people together, all these amazing speakers. She'd brought the community together. And that was Esby. And um, we met. And uh, we met and I said, right, can we, can I interview with what, can I interview about what you're doing here? Just a quick random dialogue off the cuff. And then, and then, and that's how it started. And then she's just a conduit, you know, and her mum's, her best friend's mum, I met her once. She put on another event called Love Free Kind in in Guildford about bringing together people and just sharing everything. And it was wonderful. And her her mum said, Esme is a conduit for stuff, you know, she's just attracts this, you know, she has some wonderful conduit. Wonderful. conduit. Is that how you say it? Conduit, conduit for stuff. And then here you are today, just sharing all of your wonderful stories and bringing people together. Thank you so much, Jane. I've never had that conduit. That's a lovely <laughs> phrase. <laughs> That's funny nice. how you told it. Yeah. <laughs> Someone else have a That's question it. or a comment? Yeah. Sorry. Go Me? Or <laughs> I, I, I want to say th- 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 thank you for for your awesome energy and uh, you, you know you you have a way of really you go all in as me and that was great and I also think what you're talking about is so important mm. to to really turn off the monkey mind and say that okay I know I might not be the world's best writer but I don't care I, I'll I will just I, I will get it out get it out there anyway and, and think of the process and and the, who knows it might be a bestseller on amazon or something you, you never know but it's all about because it's for sharing it's, it's giving to other people and mm. to, sh- to share that, that energy that you just shown so so clearly so, so thanks a lot yeah thank you so much thank you cool somebody else question or Oh, Esme, what are you going? What are you going to do in ten years, Esme? In ten years, um, yeah. I'd actually love to be a forest leader, so uh, which is teaching uh, children about reconnecting in nature, um, people, children with children deficit disorder, so attention deficit disorder, and ADHD, um, just and learning difficulties, and I'd like to reach every sharing stories dancing in the woods you know something along those lines definitely like forest leader is where i'm heading okay you can't thank you how long is the story itself you can't tell the story the, the actual story itself you... um i probably could yeah it's or, or, um you or, know it's... or at least you've got to share it with us obviously yeah afterwards, afterwards yeah potentially. Yeah, the story sure. becomes a portal. It's like if you're creative and you know and, and diverse, it, it, it doesn't have to be like you say, you don't have to be brilliant, written, but it just becomes a portal for you, a hub from which to rise. You know, like that's your roots, and then from that, you can it can create lots of other energy for you. And I think yeah. sometimes people like to put people in a bit of a box, and that's going to be your kind of way of then that's what you start with, and then you can flow from it. Yeah. So it doesn't matter about anything being perfect because you're perfect and it's it's like everyone else it's the energy around you and the the movement mm. you're cre- and the, the movement you're creating your own way from it yeah i listened to a ted talk the other day i can't remember the lady's name but it was about being imperfect and just going more with the bravery side and oh yeah it's, got, less... it's could be not could be um she well she had a brain tu- uh, a throat tumor and she lost her voice and she couldn't run. She was a really keen runner. And her whole life, which was, she seemed as sort of perfect, then obviously became really imperfect. And then she just had to turn her whole life upside down and really deal with the imperfections of life and, and learn to listen more. And almost like the gratitude thing, she really just sits back and lets, you know, really it becomes in tune with like the birds more and her children laughing. So... Yeah, it's, it's, that's also, I could take on that as well with this story. Mm. It's like, um, you know, like um, what you said, um, Hakun was about um, just creating, you know, more this community and um, not being like the best writer. Just, mm. um, it doesn't matter. I think you know? um, 
Jane, what you just said about Esme's energy. So I was lucky enough to go on the breakout room at the start with Esme. And that yeah, was the first yeah, thing that yeah. struck me before she even started talking. The fact she was doing a little dance beforehand. <laughs> <laughs> like that, right? so I, I love all of that. And, um, and I think, you know, you saying about the writing and not having to be the best writer. That is, for me, one of the things that's always, if ever I was going to get told off at work, it was always your reports are rubbish. The way you write is rubbish. Right. And even my kids, when I go to parents, even the teacher always says to them, you should read out loud what you've written to get your grammar right. And I think they've got me as a mother. They're never going to get their grammar right. <laughs> but it's that thing of, of just owning it, just going, right, this is me. This is what I do. You either like it or you don't. And if you don't like it, that's fine because that's your choice. I love it. And I'm the yeah. only person that matters. And, and one thing that resonated with me with what you were saying was only just today, someone who uh, is very high up in the payment card industry wrote to me or sent me a message on LinkedIn and said, can you write me a social media post? Because you're so much better at writing stuff in a way that engages people and people talk mm. than how I would write mm. it. And I thought that was amazing wow. because no one has ever told me before <laughs> no. that I was good at writing. Oh. So, oh. you know, if you just hang in there, it'll sooner or later it comes around, doesn't it? You've just got to make it happen in the way that you want it to happen. Mm. I just want to quickly say, I've got several things to say, but I'll just quickly say now, because it just triggered that then. When I started doing any, when I started doing writing on LinkedIn to big audiences, like just to the thousands of people that I was listening to, I spoke to a copywriter friend, a very good copywriter friend about it, because I had fear around that, just around that, when I first started doing LinkedIn. And um, as he said, obviously, like 95% of people won't like what you have to say, probably. It doesn't matter, though. It doesn't matter. It's the 5% or the 3% yeah. or whatever it is that are drawn to it in some way that feel the magnetic pull to it. Mm -hmm. They're the people that, they're the people that really matter, you know, so definitely be authentic and put yourself out there. Otherwise, um, you'll never you'll never find those people probably. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I find that I find that fascinating. I just want to add something as well there. Sway. Um, it's also coming of age as well. So you find that uh, in your younger years, you, you're sort of trying to figure everything out. Then it takes time to practice and practice. You get better at it till eventually it just sort of penny just drops and it's like right, I get it. You know what I mean? So it just comes also with time. So you just you just need time as well. But you'll notice you just feel yeah. more and more confident as time passes. So, yeah, the practice of it. <laughs> yeah, it just becomes natural. It's easy. Anyone that's not spoken like to say something? Yeah, Stephen. I'm just going to ask Esme, Esme thank, thanks for your um, talk. And I, I wondered why, it's interesting that you, you the, um, we come back to the idea of books being really powerful. And I wondered if you'd thought of other ways to communicate your story. You know, could you, what about recording it or making it um, a video or, um, or drawing it or, 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 you know, there's lots of ways mm. to tell stories nowadays, but it seems somehow that this idea of a book is still really powerful. And I just wondered why it was so, sort of so central to, to the, the, the sort of channel that you, 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 you're following. Mm, yeah, I, I think something just probably you know physical holding in your hands like turning the pages but you're right I'm such a visual learner so going along the lines with um, um you know a presentation or um that I've heard about a book trailer I didn't even know they were a thing so mm. I guess you could turn that into like a whole actual YouTube um mm. just flicking through the pages or um you know a lovely audio book or something mm. so just getting birdscape and sounds of children laughing that would be Mm. Yeah, that would be lovely. Mm. Yeah, great mm. idea. Well, you mentioned about um, your stories in Bristol. I love Bristol, by the way, mm. as a city. Um, mm. what, what sort of stories do you do? And is it with children or adults? Or? We, do, we, we, we try and... So a lot of the people we work with, a lot of our clients are, are, are sort of people who are much more comfortable with um, uh, what they would think of as evidence so they you know they're comfortable with figures and data and statistics and they feel that they've got to make decisions and therefore they need to sort of weigh up the hard evidence and and we often I mean we, we do a bit of that but we're sort of more interested in helping people to think about what the story is that they're trying to tell about their place like what will it be what will it be like in five years or ten years you know, they, they can set a target to be zero carbon by 2030, which is sort of meaningless to most people unless you unless you can sort of um, 
start to tell stories about what that might be like you know what, what might life yeah. be like what might you need to do differently and what might you need to change quickly or slowly so so we sort of try and bring stories into our work to help people who are and to challenge people who are much more comfortable with with sort of statistics and data to sort of just get a bit more emotionally connected to the yeah. to the sort of vision that they're trying to create really that's really interesting because obviously statistics is more numbers and figures but then you're trying to do the story side so it's more imagery and then mm. people connect more have you seen 2040 it's a documentary about what life could be like in a more positive way okay. and um he's just when you said about the um people rewriting their stories of the carbon em emissions then yeah it's just his view on the world in a in a more positive way instead of the doom and gloom yeah that sounds um, good yeah 2040 yeah. it's called yeah i'll look up i'll look that up thank you Brilliant. Can I just say some, uh, just a bit of an observation okay. slash, question, yeah, slash question? So the one thing that really struck me, so I knew from when, when we spoke last week that you were quite nervous about tonight, but actually you seem to be really enjoying it. Mm. Yeah. And yeah, that, that, that is, real. that came across in abundance that you were just really enjoying sharing your story it's with lovely. us. And that's, that's really nice, really powerful. Very confident here. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it was lovely. It's yes, a very it lovely great. group. Yeah, I just knew that it was going to be a lovely group, and it feels like a really yeah, it's a safe space. And I mm. think just I just had to keep telling myself that, and <laughs> it's, um, it's it's good to share. Like I keep saying, you know, I feel I feel fear in trying to say this right, but um, I, I found some of the um, I mean, basically the fear space came about three years ago at the same time as I started performing music, and it was a few months after something I got involved in that Edward knows about, um, a, a global peer group for men. And I did a very significant piece of self-development work where I did a big unlocking of uh, stuff around self-limiting beliefs. And within a few months, I started this, absolutely no regrets. And I started performing music for the first time in my life, well into my forties. Yeah. And um, absolutely no looking back at all. Like, and I, and um, we'll, we'll go on and on, you know. And around fears generally, I've done some exercises around New Year's uh, in the last few years. And I know there's a huge amount of power around fear setting as opposed to goal setting. And it is much more powerful. And I've done lists of 20, 25, 30 fears. I'm trying, I've got to break through this year, you know, whatever it is, I'll try and work on one or two of them. Um, so, uh, and, and just, to, just to quickly also say, in terms of the peer space purpose, what I've always felt is it is about ultimately, not just expressing yourself in this way, but how you express yourself over a whole lifetime, which can quite often end up meaning that you do write a book or you do create a business or you do something that is your, your expression to the world, your expression of care in some way, whether it's a, all those different ways you can creatively express yourself and something that you either own or you have a significant stake in as opposed to just being employed by someone, for example. So I've always wanted it to have that energy, if you like. So it really resonates, even when you, we were talking before about what you were gonna, what you were gonna say. I've also also done fair bit of metaphorical storytelling story writing last year and it kind of mm, I was started gonna say a bit before the lockdown but actually I found it found it very very cathartic to and what I loved on one of our first sort of um higher sort of uh, more sort of um higher spec talk nights like these um Helen who came along to speak the first thing she said after she did her talk was she found it very cathartic and of course all these things are like that and um whether it's starting businesses, whether it's doing talks, whether it's writing stories, um, I really, I really believe that, and I've found that in my life for sure, and very helpful last year after all this craziness, you know, to to be doing that kind of stuff. So I just wanted to say that's my little download from what 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 stimulated me tonight from what you said. Mm. The um the was it the metaphorical fire talks around the campfire, or was it all online? Well, the fire talk thing was about my favorite kind of space. It was like more about my special space. Like when mm -hmm. Jane asked me to talk and she said, uh, what would you talk about? I said, I want to talk about, you know, being around the campfire, the idea of the, the primalness of the fire and all that stuff. But what I've written about at the end of 2020 was more about a way to help me handle all the things that happened last year. Like, you know, and I found that what I, what I found I'm able to do now, and I've done it a few times in an hour or two is to write a metaphorical story. In my case, it seems to be with animals. Uh, that really helps me to deal with things that are happening like in the world 
uh, and I find it very cathartic and very soothing. And it feels like a bit like a little bit of songwriting I've done. When you go into that space, it feels like, oh, I want to do more of this. This is, feels like a really cool space to be mm-hmm. in, to be to be writing creatively music or or stories. And so I just I'd recommend it to anyone and everyone to explore it. And of course, businesses is another thing, another sort of level, if you like. But so I just wanted, to, I felt, yeah, I really wanted to share that that about from my perspective. Have you seen the Disney film Soul? Because um, when they go into a zone and it's just that musical frame of mind and anything that we do that takes us away, like the writing or the singing or whatever that may be, just to go into a, a therapeutic zone. And it just reminds me when you said that, that, how, how when you write your stories out. and songs. Yeah, yeah. And it's got other meanings as well. <laughs> I can't remember. I, I personally just, I'd love to hear if John and Lennon want to say something. I just want to, I'll just, the last thing I'll say before we wrap up is um, I personally have found the virtual peer spaces just as um, enjoyable as the dinner spaces uh, and in a very similar way to I find the performing music. And when the, uh, the band I was in came together, that just that feeling of the people coming together to share something with some kind of care about it. Um, I just think it's, uh, I always get a buzz out of it. You know, it's really, really special thing to me. So I just want to just want to say say that about it. And from my point of view, yeah, no regrets about any of the things I've done as a result of working on some of these um, fears and fundamental self limiting beliefs. If you like, yeah, go on, go on, Edwin. So I just wanted to point out something that was a behavior modification for me. In the chat, I posted the California Typewriter, which is a documentary about typewriters. But the whole essence of the machine is around creation of language-based stories, right? It's the content. Uh, I, I highly recommend it because it motivated me so much of a childhood connection that I had to my mom's old typewriter, right? Typing on a typewriter. <laughs> and you'll find that in the essence of this, Tom Hanks is in it. Uh, he's got a collection of typewriters. They don't make typewriters anymore. But the, the beautiful thing that's brought up is that a typewriter is built for one thing. So just think of that when you're in the creative mode, because some of the people that talk on this uh, um, show talk about, I can't, you cannot create on a Word document or any kind of word processing thing because you are automatically an editor as much as you are a creator. So if you want to touch into the pure creative side of yourself to expound in Storyland, don't do it on a computer. Don't do it in a Word doc because you'll constantly, oh, maybe there's another word for that. You know, you pick apart whatever you're trying to say and you you go down rabbit holes. You don't need to. Uh, yeah. But we get busy with trying to make it perfect, right? So just think of it in creation of stories. Do you want to tell a story or do you want to edit the story you're trying to tell? Mm, I'm in. Mm. Love that. Love that. If, if, if I may add to that, this is a typewriter. It's inverted. What? Free write. Free write. It's a modern typewriter. It's got a, a, a screen like an e ink screen, and it's only made for, for writing. It's got a good. Let's see if I can open it with one hand. It's a pretty cool uh, thing because you. This is what you get: a good keyboard, yeah. and uh, and then it's also connected to online, so so everything gets uploaded to the cloud if you're online, and then you don't get all the notifications and all that stupid stuff. So so you right. can really and that's just a uh, hint. I like that idea. Second. I like the yeah. idea of it being just focused, right? You're just focused on the writing and notifications don't bother you and thinking about that recently, yeah. I just want to ask Lena or John, did you want to come in? It's the last few minutes, so I'm just going to wrap up in the next five minutes. So did you want to have any, say anything or share anything? I just sent a link to Esme to connect with me because, as you know, I do these uh, panel discussions, these video discussions for LinkedIn because video posts do communicate differently so Esme if um, if you'd like to I don't know I haven't read the book but if there are characters and you play one and I play the other uh, or we could get some people in like a number of people in the room to interpret 
a verse each. Uh, yeah. And then you can discuss okay. it. So basically what I do is you sort it out. I record it and distribute it because I haven't got to think too hard about it because I can just do it in the moment. So if you connect with me, then, uh, yeah, we can do something that I think will uh, help publicise it. Wicked. Cool. Love to do that. Okay. Thank okay. you cool. so much. Yeah. Can oh, I just Lana, add... Would you like to share something? Lana, yeah, throw it. yeah, yeah, I do. Uh, I just want to add, you know, um, Neil, you've gone through a really great journey, but you had the courage to talk about it, and so did Asmi. And Jonathan, huge shout out to you about, you know, the great articles that you sent. We need people, more people like you, to have the courage to showcase the journey, the ups and downs of um, how we get to where we are. It, to a lot of people, you guys at this pay, at this moment in time are amazing. But what they didn't know was the sort of journey you've gone through to get to this place. And a lot of people still are too afraid, too scared to actually show their weakness or their vulnerable side. So I really would love to encourage you guys to speak more, advertise more about something like this, because whether you're female or male, etc., or young or old, I think that little bit of encouragement, you just don't know the sort of impact you could make to the people out there. That's lovely. lovely Thanks comment. for sharing, Lena. Yeah, I totally resonate with that because, you know, with social media being so in your face and visual, you can just instantly think, oh, wow, look at them achieving and then going to that whole comparison mindset. But actually, like you it's said, Lena, behind closed doors there's the whole journey and and process that they've had to go through to get to where yeah. they where especially they are. the young graduates nowadays they thought oh my gosh he's so amazing but yet yeah. their journey so far wasn't yeah. perfect so it's not the great yeah. work guys uh, uh, I'd, I'd like to as maybe would you like to say any final words how do people reach you how do people connect with you what's the best way to keep in touch with you um yeah i'm a bit actually rubbish on uh <laughs> just sharing my socials but um you can find me on um esme finch like the bird i can just actually send the link that would be yeah, easier yeah um is it coming before through? You, yeah before you leave the call just on a practical point do you save the chat i'm just going to share a bit about the peer space so i'd uh, like to try and finish on the hour um uh, esme thank you so much that I have to say it felt a bit more like the dinner vibe because we had a bit more time to have the interaction afterwards it used to be a bit more kind of um half the time speaking half the time talking because you sp talked a bit less we kind of got a bit deeper into the discussion which I actually found I found I really enjoyed it actually um so yeah thanks so much really for, therapeutic yeah how did you find it yeah, super therapeutic I mean you know like I said I did have a clock next to me and I'm trying to do it to you know 15 minutes but actually you know I just said everything that I needed to say uh, I felt I could say and then also just to um, you know get to know each other and hear each other like what your struggles yeah. are and or like what you were saying now about um, your campfires and and your journey through your through your music I just love hearing that as well um well, it was great to get a big dose of you and we all got to interact and say a bit about ourselves as well yeah. so, and it was all based on stimulus so um so oh yes Lenny, you do... know how to do it you know how to yeah, do, yeah. Do, 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 do. yeah. <laughs> we do great. an event like this we do an event every week we do a speaker event every two weeks so next week it's the connect event which is basically i think the one then i was thinking it might be where we have a quick intro like that and then we go into rounds of one-to-ones uh we're very invested in building this and trying to make more of it and grow the community and, and all this stuff so just be aware that that's a uh, bit more things hopefully coming and i believe huck you've uh you're, happy, you're going to take the next session. Would you like to quickly say something about 30 seconds sort of version of what you're going to cover in your session in two weeks? Yeah, I, I do have a tendency to go off tangents. Uh, so, but I, I would really like to talk about the, the plans I have for, for the Healers Hub. Uh, I also set up a, a, an NGO, which is called Earth House. But, but I, I, I'd like, like to focus on uh, what we're talking about here is sharing uh, and, and not thinking about the monetary and, and all the, the business side, but, but to really pay it forward. 
um, I think that it is so important to to as if you're working for the common good for for helping people like Esme is doing with her book to to really put it out there and and uh, support each other and yeah. so I think that that will be the focus of my, my talk. Okay, great. So I look forward Lovely. to you taking center stage. Uh, thank you very much again, everyone, for your interest. I think you all know about the LinkedIn page as well. Everything's there generally. Um, and once again, thanks again very much, Esme, for for being the main feature tonight. Yeah, oh, sorry. Thank you so much. Yeah, I'm very grateful. Thank you for this opportunity. <laughs> Lovely to chat with you all. Okay. That was great. It was really, really good. Great. It's been a good thank evening. So See you all again, guys. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> thank you, Niall. See you all soon. <laughs> Kyle, um, did he, you said there was an open bar? Where's that? <laughs> well, Where's, I know. We're on Westmay. Oh, it's at, <laughs> it's 